I can't drop my sword. <clears throat> Our net, I know. And I'm gonna stab you later, by the way. You gotta stab me. I have to go. Waiting for you. Oh, I guess it's really friendly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is your birthday. It's yeah. either spanking or stabbing, so some, some form of violence to celebrate that you're... I'm not that long. <laughs> <laughs> so much violence when people nice to each other. Does anyone remember that? Sorry. Hey, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next three letter is going to be reading from her brand new published book, Way of the Serpents. And they are for sale here today at the Malvern. So if you want to pick up your copy, and we have the author who can personalize Who's it for you. Yeah. I'm glad you asked, plant in the audience. Uh, <laughs> please welcome Donna Detchen Birdwell. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. This is really pretty exciting for me. I actually get to read something from a, a published ah, thing. Um, I have to lay a little groundwork for you first, though. I can't just jump right into a train wreck in the middle of a novel. <laughs> that would never work. But I'm not going to give any spoilers either, so. Um, the, the book that I've written, Way of the Serpent, is what is often referred to as speculative fiction, which means that it's, 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 uh, it's sci-fi, it's future, but there's no aliens or spaceships. So the world I have imagined for the year 2125, which is when my story begins, is one in which nobody grows old thanks to a miracle drug called Chulel, and where the big corporations control everything, including your memories and your life story. Our main character is 111-year-old Jenda Swain, who looks and feels 22. In the opening chapter, she has an unsettling experience and begins to wonder who she really is. She soon meets a charming activist artist who has a quest of his own, and of course they fall in love. I don't want to tell you too much about the story because I'm hoping you'll want to read the whole thing, but I will tell you that the biggest train wreck in Jinda Swain's life took place about 95 years ago, and that most of it is hidden behind great walls of forgetfulness. As the story unfolds, the track her life hurtles toward, the track of her life hurtles toward a major train wreck with those forgotten truths. Her lover, Luis Martin Zenobia, has been telling her things about the world she moves in that she doesn't want to hear and doesn't want to believe. This is where we pick up the story. Chapter six. <laughs> Remembering her own invariably pleasant experiences of Chulel spa days with memory restoration, Jenda felt her defenses and her ire rising. But had they really been so pleasant? She felt sudden sparks, electric pricks throughout her body, small white explosions, fear. Really, Luis? Come on, that's ridiculous. Jenda knew her anger was irrational, but it felt real, and it was keeping her focused. No, really. Now you're making stuff up. No, that can't be. I refuse to believe it. The questions had been bad enough. The answers threatened Jenda's mind like a jackhammer. She needed to get away. She shoved her chair toward Luis. As he started to speak again, Jenda raised her hands in front of her face. No, she shouted. Enough. Leave me alone. I don't want to hear any more. She grabbed up her shoulder bag and shoeless stomped out of the house, down the stairs, and into the midday sun. Tears were coming, but she refused them. I've let all this get to me too much already. I've had enough. I want my boring, trivial little life back. The graveled walkway was hurting her feet, and it felt good. Her mind was in turmoil. Jenda stopped next to a fountain in the heart of the little park. The grass under her feet felt cool and soft. 
She stood there, listening to the splashing water. She watched it spurting up, spilling over the first level, the second level, disappearing somewhere beneath the ground to emerge again through the little spout at the top and continue its monotonous cycle. Some of it splashed out onto the grass and disappeared. Jenda sat down. The sun was warm on her face and arms, almost too warm on this sunny November day. But every once in a while, a cloud passed overhead, and Jenda clung to each deliciously cool shadow. She didn't want to think. She only wanted to feel the sun, the shadows, the cool grass, and listen to the fountain. By the time the sun approached a more oblique angle, Jenda had given in to her tears. She clasped her arms around her bent knees and put her head down so that no one would see as she wept silently. When her tears finally ran out, she lifted her sweater to wipe her face. What was it Granny L used to say, she mused. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. However much she might want to unknow what Luis had shown her, she knew that was impossible. She might have been able to live with a delusion imposed from outside, but she couldn't, she wouldn't delude herself. She did want to know. She did want to ask questions, and whatever the answers might be, she wanted to know. Jenda sat a while longer, feeling cleansed by the sound of splashing water. Then she rose, brushed herself off, and began to walk slowly back to Luis's place, keeping to the grassy patches and the smooth paving stones. She half expected the door next to the outdoor staircase to be locked and her suitcases on the top step. Instead, the door was slightly ajar, and when she went inside, she saw a glass on the table filled with hibiscus tea and some mostly melted ice cubes. The glass sat in a puddle of condensation so you finally decided to come back? Luis was standing in the shadows by the door that led to the balcony. His arms crossed, his voice was tense. What made you think I'd come back at all? Jinda countered with a covert sniffle. I guess I hoped you would. What, so I wouldn't mess up your crazy subversive plot to expose some incredible conspiracy? No, Jinda, I just, I've pushed you, I'm sorry. No, Luis, no apologies. Why should you apologize for showing me the truth? I don't understand why I got so angry. There are things I can't explain, but I want to, Luis. I want to know the truth. Jenda took a couple of steps toward him and stopped. She looked up into his moist eyes. This was her life now, and she felt ready to embrace it. Luis reached his hand toward her, and she took it. They each stepped forward, then leaned together, their arms around one another. <laughs>